Get it? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's about time uh, for some message to be delivered. And uh, when it's not, we get a little patient and wonder if there's something wrong. Why is he doing that? Why can't he just get to it, for goodness sakes? You know, how many of you looked at your watch just for a second as this was happening? You know, even in a place where we're sort of developing the notion of patience, it is just so easy to get impatient. The story, one of, one of the things going on in the story today, which is a fabulous golden calf story, one of the things that's going on is the fact that um, people are impatient. It's interesting that the first thing that Paul says about love in 1 Corinthians 13 is love is patient. Um, of all of the things that you could say about love, all of the things that you could say about love, whatever the love is, the, the first thing Paul says is that love is patient. And yet, it is perhaps the most difficult thing. Because we are always waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for the test to come back. You know, and it's, 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 we'd almost we'd want an answer, a bad answer, rather than waiting for some other kind of answer. We want the test to come back. We want to know what the story is. We want to know what we want to know now. It's gotten to the point now where you can't. We don't sort of suspend understanding, say, well, I'll find about that some other time. I'll look. No. You know, if, if there's some question in the groups that I hang out with, three or four people are trying to beat each other to the Google search to figure out what the answer is. Because God forbid that we would have an unanswered question in our, in our heads for more than about five minutes, because then it would suggest that we didn't know everything, and it wasn't. So we, the great God Google will provide the answer for us. <laughs> I hope my son's not listening. He works for Google. <laughs> some Google executive knowing about this. But, so there is this, there is this understanding that we need to know what's going on. Scientific curiosity has turned to an impatient desire to know something right now. Waiting rooms have changed. When I was just a pup, you go into a waiting room and there was not much going on. You had maybe some very old magazines in waiting rooms. Airport waiting rooms were sort of quiet. Now, waiting rooms have one, two, I was in one yesterday that had three televisions in it. CNN, hopefully. CNN is broadcasting all the time so that there's no need for us to be bored or impatient ever again because we, our lives will be filled with the kind of information and static, whether we need to know it or not. We will have answers to questions we didn't know we had constantly. <clears throat> Which brings us to the base of Mount Sinai, and uh, so these were people that were impatient, 40 days, gosh, however long, it was a long time, and they needed these answers because they were sort of stuck, they'd been wandering, well, you know, let's, let's feel for them a little bit here, they were wandering a while, <coughs> Moses says, wait, wait here, I'll be right back, <coughs> was it right back, you know, <coughs> so what's the story, they've been wandering for a while, the food's a little iffy, but it's there, but... And there are no clear answers. There are no particular things that we... There's no direction. We've been wandering. Is there a compass? No, we're going to wander. They're wandering for a while longer. They want answers, and they want them now. As it turns out, however, impatience is costly. And as it turns out, however, when religious leaders give in to impatience, it's costly too. Impatience is costly. Research, there's some really new interesting research on impatience that I found on Google that suggests that, that uh, people who are impatient have lower credit scores. Now really, Columbia Business School in 2011 had a published thing. They got 437 low to moderate income people together, and they, they said, well, we'll give you so much now, or we'll give you more later. And the people who took the immediate, smaller, 
amount of money, mostly had lower credit scores. Now, there's all sorts of variables about that, but their FICO scores, 30 points higher if you waited for your money. This is like that famous, famous uh, research study with marshmallows. Remember the marshmallow study from the 1970s where they would bring children into a room and they would say, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you one marshmallow now or two marshmallows in a few minutes. And then they, they later on, they studied how well those, those children did. And the children that took the one marshmallow now almost always did less well than the people who took the two marshmallows in just a few minutes. So there is a price to be paid for patients psychologically in their lives. You're all thinking of examples, perhaps, of how this has happened in you. So there is this thing that's getting worse in our culture about impatience. So if there was ever a story that we might want to relate to in terms of how we could desperately hold on to something shiny, oh, it's shiny, something new and shiny that would sort of be the answer to our short-term problems, if this ever, if there ever was a story in the Bible about how this might apply, this is one of those stories. Because we are increasingly wanting the quick answers. And my friends, holiness might not be a quick answer. The true battles of justice have taken decades. The business of deepening a relationship doesn't happen overnight. The business of developing community and relationships, we just going to have to get used to the idea that this might take a little while. That's sort of bad news. It's been hurting the church a little bit. It's, you know, the mainline Protestants have been coming and saying, well, we're developing community, we're having meetings, we're having a committee meeting. Would you like to come to our committee meeting? Because we're working on this. We've got a long-term committee going on this. We're going we're gonna to study it for a while, and then we're going to talk about it for more, and then we're gonna, we might come up with a conclusion or not. And, oh, man, that's hard to market to a world that wants something now and right away, and what am I going to do tomorrow? It hurts the church when we try and talk about this long-range holiness. And sometimes we give in. You know, sometimes in the church, everybody comes to Aaron and says, Come on, he's gone. Who knows what he's doing? Can we have something a little flashier? And we might do something a little flashier. You know, we'll put something together. We'll take a collection. And you'll put in your rings. I don't know what we'll do. And we'll have something that's flashy and, and, and interesting. God forgive me if I do. Because the kind of depth that we are looking for in our lives and the kind of God that we are looking for will require some effort, will require some patience, will require some investment from us that may not be easy, may require a cross. This story is about impatience across a broad range because I, I need to point out to you not that I'm judging God here or anything, but God is impatient too. Have you noticed that God is impatient with the people? They, they, they were bad. They did something bad. And says, oh, God says, I'm going to blow them up. I'm just going to wipe them off the face of the earth. And God is if the first problem that I had with those people. I'm going to just wipe them out. And Moses says, well, now let's think about this. <laughs> and, and God, who, who was impatient, there's no other way around. So, oh, yeah. And, and changes God's mind. So one, there's three or four times in the scripture where God says, oh, uh, 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 I changed my mind. It's usually about the destruction of people, luckily enough, that God changes. But, so this is a story about impatience across the board. This is a story about impatience in the universe. This is a story about the universe wanting something to happen now. That I got, this is about the constant battle for immediate gratification. This is about the basic battle that ever, God, us, we're all in this battle, that I want it now, whatever it is. Because waiting doesn't answer my questions, waiting doesn't 
help me decide exactly what to do. Waiting is just frustrating. But if we want this holiness, we may have to put up with rehearsals, tedious rehearsals, until the beauty is achieved. We may have to put up with conflicts and problems in relationships until we figure out how to be with each other. We may have to put up with committee meetings. Holy smokes, I was at two days of committee meetings for some national Presbyterian thing this week, and there were moments I wanted to scream running from the room, I gotta tell you. Those are the moments in which we are called to holiness. Those are the moments when our patience is tested. The moments when we are called to a deeper kind of faith. These moments come in parenting. Jack will do something for the 17th time. We'll have to be patient about it. It happens in marriages. The socks were on the floor again this morning. Whatever. The yogurt lid was face down on the counter, for instance. <laughs> again, and again, and again, we, our patience is on the line until there is some sort of resurrection. So whatever the arenas are in your life, whether it is a community of people gathered waiting for some word to uh, from God, whether you are in relationship, whether you are a parent, all of the loves of your life call for this kind of patience, which is a pain of what we are called to. This gentleness, this list that Paul comes up with, which is all about the patience. All about the patience. Whatever is true, and how long does truth need to find out whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. We'll work at these things, Paul says. This is the holy task of our lives, to be patient with ourselves, with our God, with each other. And so we pray for this patience. We pray because there are days when we will not have it. And it is the one thing we should have on our list that we will pray for later. So if you would be patient, we're not going to pray for that right away. But when we get to the prayer, it will be more meaningful to you if you have a couple of things ready that you need particular help with. Patience.